very much thank you sweet appreciate it appreciate it thank you very much thank you thank you thank you for um thank you for being here we really appreciate you guys being here um so we're ball in the house we're a group from boston massachusetts uh we tour the country making music this is our job you know we do about um 220 shows a year uh, we're a full-time touring acapella group um, from playing in schools to colleges to performing art centers and big theaters all across the country. Uh, we're just coming off of a two-month tour in the Midwest where we did um, 37 theaters from as high as Montana and as low as New Mexico. Very, very beautiful tour. It was unbelievable. And here we are, like, performing for you guys. So you just never know where the road's going to take you. But, you know, we consider ourselves very, very lucky guys. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, we all started singing or performing at a very young age. Some of us as young as like first and second grade. So we got involved in chorus and we sang in church. And um, when we were old enough, we joined band and we did some acting and painting and drawing and dancing. And we loved the arts so much that, you know, we always had music in our lives. You know, we did other things, of course, but we always, you know, came back to music because we loved it so much. In fact, you know, we all went to college for music. And now here we are being able to do what we truly love and what we're truly passionate about which is singing for our job. And again, we're very, very lucky guys. Now, I mentioned we're an acapella group. Acapella is music without any instruments, so everything's 100% live. It's 100% vocal. So there's no backing tracks. There's no drum loop. It's just five guys, five voices. That's it. And, um, you know, when we were out in the Midwest, it's funny. Because people hear drums coming out of our speakers, you know, they think, you know, that we're singing to backing tracks. So people actually, like, left the show you know, wanting their money back because they didn't think it was a cappella. But, you know, it's just the five of us coming together, creating music. And, um, you know, one thing that really ties this Ball in the House family together, and I do say family because we're five brothers up here. You know, we spend like 160 nights away from our family. So we are, in fact, family. You know, we love each other like brothers. We sometimes argue like brothers, but we also forgive like brothers, which is really important. And um, But one thing that really ties it all together is something called harmony. 
That's absolutely correct, Dave. So one voice singing can be exciting and moving all by itself. But let's hear how much more richer it can sound when we add another voice to that. Now that's what's called harmony. Now harmony is when you have more than one note being played or sung in our case at the same time to create chords. Yeah, man. But the thing about harmony is that it's not just up, up here on stage when we're singing. Like, you all use harmony all the time, whether you knew it or not. Whether it be in class, working on a project together, that's harmony. Or when you're at your home, working together with your parents or your siblings, that's harmony too. So for us, if we don't have harmony when we're just living our lives, we can't have it when we're trying to sing together either. I mean, just like teamwork, right? When you work as a team, you can create something larger than any individual. And this right here is a perfect example how each person contributes one note, but that it comes together to make up that chord. So for us, teamwork is super important, and musically, it happens on stage mainly in two ways. So if y'all can hold that chord for me, let's demonstrate the first way, which is tuning. Tuning is singing the notes on the correct pitches so that they sound good together. But if we're not listening to each other, working really carefully as a team, those notes might start to go a little bit sharp, a little bit flat, chord goes out of tune and then it doesn't sound good and then the other way we use teamwork is by blending so blend is controlling how much each individual note sticks out on its own or mixes in with the other notes that are being sung and when we're supposed to be blending the voices but again not really focusing working as a team kind of losing that thing you're going to listen and you're going to be able to hear one voice drowning out the others and then again it doesn't sound as good So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a better idea of how tuning and blend work for us. Two of the ways that we use teamwork on stage in order to make harmony. And now that we've shown you how we use harmony, we're going to show you how we build or arrange our songs. Most times when we start, we start with Johnny. Now what Johnny does is the beatbox. That means that all the drum sounds you're hearing, they're all coming from him. But next up is my friend Kevin. Now Kevin is our bass. And bass is singing really, really, really low. Next up, my friend Davey. Now what Davey does is the baritone part. And baritone sing kind of low, not as low as the bass, but it's still very important. And next up, you've got Monty. Now Monty is our tenor. And tenor sing really high. And all those different parts come back together just like this. So we put them together so we can take them back apart. But this time it's a voice section. The first section is the rhythm section, the bass and the drums. And they set that groove and that feel so we can move and dance to the songs that we listen to, like that. And then there's the backing harmony, the baritone and the tenor parts. And they fill in that gap in the middle and give the song a, a bit more life. But, but there's something missing, right? We need the words, the lyrics, the story. So for this song in particular, that's my job, okay? Here we go.
Thank you very much. All right, so now you know how we use our voices to put them together to make our music. Let's talk a little bit about the technology that we use to help us to get the sound we want out to all of you. We get mics, we get the speakers, right? Just like anyone we use, it makes us louder, easy for us to sing, talk, normal volume level. Usually this stuff here is off stage, but we bring it out on stage so we can show some of the things that this all is doing. Of course, the big antennas pick up the sound from the wireless microphones, but as it travels through this stuff, we're adding effects, we're mixing the sound, getting it all together, again, to get the sound we want. So effects and anything that changes around the sound, and one very common effect is something called EQ. And EQ helps you shape the sound by taking just a small part of it, like the treble, the high part, or the bass, the low part, and then just turning up or turning down that part independent of the rest of the sound. So if I came over here and I turned down all the bass on my microphone, well, now you'd get something like this. It's still bright, still clear, but a lot thinner without the bass underneath, right? Let's try this. Let's do the opposite, taking the bass, turning that up, but also taking the treble, the high part, and turning that all the way down. So now you get this, which is only the low part coming through the speakers there. Now, this is kind of an extreme example, but you can see how important EQ is for getting a nice, good, and clear sound. And we're going to adjust that EQ for each person's microphone, because as you just saw, everybody has their own different voice part doing something slightly different than everybody else. So that's something we set on everybody's microphone, and then that tends to just stay the same throughout the show. But there's another effect that's only on one guy that turns on and off depending on the song. And so I'm going to bring out Kevin here to explain what it is, why we turn it on and off, and all that stuff. Yeah, I can do that. So, uh, if you can tell from my voice alone, I get to sing all the really low stuff. So, my singing's actually going to be naturally a little bit different than the other guys. And with technology, I can kind of help elevate that sound a little bit. But, so, I'm guessing you guys heard of groups like, uh, like Home Free, perhaps uh, Straight No Chaser, or Pentatonix, I'm hoping. But, uh, so... A lot of those groups, and a lot of groups out there that do this for a living, you know, again, there's no instruments on stage or anything. We're all, we all have to emulate instruments using our voices. So, you know, sometimes you hear the upper harmonies in the background. They can be harmonizing with the soloist here and there. Uh, maybe singing some O's and O's, holding out the chords and pads to fill up those harmonies. But my job here, I'm trying to emulate a bass guitar. So, my singing is going to be different, naturally. So I usually uh, more closed vowel with my singing. So a lot of uh, some dum dum, some doo doos here and there, and stuff of that nature. So like a so kind of stuff like that. Nice and resonant, a little more closed, so I can really get that bass pluck sound there. But um, to push that sound even further, though, I have this little guy called a bass pedal. This guy's really fun because I get to push a button here, and then my voice gets to drop down a whole octave. But you, you can kind of hear that underlying uh, octave below me. That kind of just fills out the sound a little more to really come off, trying to come off as a bass guitar. And you know, when I combine the certain patterns and the pitches, it all comes together, and it'll kind of give that effect off. And like here, an example. Uh, Something like that, or uh, like You can kind of hear the difference there, here in between of when I push that, when I push turn it on and off. Uh, based on whatever song or style we're doing, that bass pedal might come off a little bit easier, and it might fit the song more, like a, how about this? So based on the style of the song, you know, it can kind of give a pretty cool effect. Why, thank you. That was really cool. I had one applause. I love that. But yeah, it's pretty fun what I get to do there. So thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, Kevin. All right, so those are some of the effects that we use, but there's also, I mentioned being able to mix the sound. And if you've ever used a mixer in the kitchen, right, 
think about what happens when you make a recipe, like chocolate chip cookies. You're going to mix, or you're going to get all the ingredients together. You're going to measure out how much of each ingredient you need. And then by mixing it all together, you get that chocolate chip cookie dough and then awesome cookies. If you think about each of our voices as an ingredient, the mixer is going to measure out how much of each voice comes through the speakers, mixes it all together, and then sends it out to all of you. This is our mixer right here. And each fader on it controls whatever's plugged in. In our case, just the five microphones. Each voice, we can control how loud or soft it is. Super simple, but really important. Now, everybody knows you can control your voice. We talked about blend and being able to make it louder or softer. But when we sing the way we do, we're singing really, really high. Kevin's singing really, really low, and I'm making funny drum noises. So what happens when we try and sing without the microphones is it can be really difficult for the rhythm section, myself and Kevin, to project and push out those parts to compete with the other people, to be able to hear the higher parts, the tenor and the baritone. When we use the mixer and the microphones, we can turn up those parts so that we can get them just as loud, get the mix we want where you can hear all five of us. So we'll listen carefully. We're going to give you a little difference so you can hear without the microphones and then with. So the first song we sang today was that was um, that was Khalid, right? Cal yeah, Khalid, right? The second song we did, the second song we sang today, who knows who who sings it in real life? Ain't nobody. Who sings it? Who? Oh no, no, the second one. Um, ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. If you know it, shout it out. Who knows it? Oh man, nah, man. oh, yo, nah. <laughs> so that second song, y'all. That second song. It's by a lady named Shaka Khan. So tonight, y'all go and like Google who Shaka Khan is. You're welcome. The third song we did, uh, Treasure, the on mic, off mic, that was Bruno Mars, right? But the last song we did, Knock Knock, is a song that, that I wrote. It's an original song. So those first three are what we call cover songs, right? That's when, thank you? That's when, you know, a musician or artist hears a song from another musician or artist and they think, yo, that song is awesome. I want to perform it myself. But there's something real special about original music. And I figured what you all in, in seventh grade, anyone here can be a songwriter. It's just about the things going on in your heart, things going on in your head, you know, and just putting them down on paper. 
So for instance, that song that I wrote, Knock Knock, is a song all about, all about love. So back when I was in college, right, there was this girl I had a huge crush on. Yes. And so, and so one day, and so one day, right, I went and I asked her out on a date, and she said no. Y'all, it hurt. Right, thank you. She knows. It's okay. It, yo, y'all, it hurt. But, but there was something special about her, y'all. That was something really special about this particular girl, right? So whenever I would see her on campus, you know, I was nice and respectful, of course, but I'd, but I'd ask her again. I'd be like, yo, if you get hungry, let your boy know. I got you. So I guess, I guess one day she got tired of me bothering her about going out to eat, and she was like, okay, fine, let's go. And y'all, it was the best date ever. It was so much fun. And so, man, that was 12 years ago, right? And we fast forward to today. That girl and I, we've been married for eight years, and we have a little baby girl. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Shoot your shot, man. Shoot your shot. So that song, that song, Knock Knock, that I wrote, again, is about love, but it's, it's about that time in my life when I had to be a, a little persistent, you know? I wasn't I went being crazy. I wasn't banging, nothing like that. No, it was just a nice... Polite, hey, knock, knock, I know you got to eat, what's up, right? So I'm curious, um, are there any songwriters out there? Anyone ever written a song before? Yeah, don't, yeah. Okay, okay. All right, wait, chill, 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 chill. Thank you, thank you, Scott, give me the lights. So I'm curious, though, um, you said sort of, kind of. So um, what kind of emotions or feelings go into your songs? Okay, yeah, yeah, depression, yeah. I, like, no, real talk, if you all like, ever go on, like, if you're ever in a bad mood, some like depressing, really, really sad songs that just make you feel that way. Anybody up there? All right, yes, I see you on the edge. Yes. Heartbreak. Yo, wait, whoa, whoa, yo, depression. Wait, wait, wait. Depression, sadness, heartbreak. Y'all in seventh grade, what is going on in your lives? Oh, yes, you're right. Seventh grade, you're right. I'm curious, anyone here ever been happy? We don't, we don't do happiness? Anyone, in, anyone ever, ever been excited? Yo, for the teachers, just a little bit stressed out? Just a little bit stressed? You know. So all these different emotions make for great songs, y'all. And, and it doesn't just have to be songs. It can be poems or short stories, long stories, raps. All these different ways to just get your ideas out there on paper. Because I got to tell you, man, when you put those ideas, those feelings out, and just let, let them go, just get them off your chest, you feel so much better. You really, really do. And when you share them with the people closest to you, you have no idea where it can take your relationship. Now, that's just one way that we like to express ourselves here in Ball in the House. But I know that Johnny has another really cool way to express himself. How do you do it, fam? Yeah, beatboxing. Beat Anybody beatboxing. else ever tried beatboxing? She's like, now when I only see three hands, I know you're all lying. Because <laughs> at least if not for real, just like for fun. All right, well, let's talk about this because Wallace is right. This is another way like songwriting, musically, that you can express yourself, right? People usually think about you either, and that's usually a choice in school, right? You sing or you play an instrument. There's not really much else. But there are so many other different things you can do, so many other ways that you can express yourself outside of that. So beatboxing just happens to be what I do. And even if you tried it before, if you've never tried it before, I think you find it's pretty easy to do. Um, I think most of the sounds, like, for example... Let's try the hi-hat symbol, right? Hi or hi-hat symbols. Two symbols together on a pole. They open and close to get these different sounds. When they're closed, what I do is make a smile and through my teeth make the sound of the letter T, like a t t t t <laughs> One more time. T <laughs> That's better, all right. And then the open hi-hat symbols for T-S, like Yeah, all right. Now, the kick drum is that big drum that sits on its side on the ground. You play it with the foot pedal, and this one is just boom as low as you can make it, like boom, 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 boom. And then the snare drum sits right in the center, playing with the drum sticks, but underneath it, the cool part about the snare drum are the snares themselves, these little jagged wires that rattle around the bottom underneath the snare drum when you hit the top. 
So to get those two parts of the snare drum vocally, we use two sounds. Sound of the letter P and the sound of the letter F smushed together, like Nice. Now, there's a lot of other sounds besides these three sounds, but there's also many ways to make those sounds too. So yours may come out differently. You may already have tried beatboxing and have your own different versions of these sounds. But either way, you take those sounds and you just put them together one after the other to make the beats. So try. All right. Nice. How about... Symbols, symbols. See if you can put some of these together. Got it? Good. Keep it going. A little faster. And faster. Thank you very much. All right. Now, I heard some great stuff out there and some good effort. And maybe we can see if we get a couple volunteers, someone who's not shy. doesn't matter if you've ever beatboxed before or not, but someone who's willing to try some sounds or beats on mic on stage. Yeah. You guys help me out. Give me, give me two volunteers. Check, 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 check. So we got a Vincent and Thanks for coming up, my man. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Check, check. Elliot. All right. All right, here we go. We got Vincent and we got Elliot who bravely volunteered to come on up and help us make some beats. What I'm thinking. Check, check. Are you good? All right. Let's double check. This one's on. All right. So what I'm thinking is we'll give each of you individually a chance to try some sounds or some beats using the microphone, running through all the fancy tech that we talked about before. And then, based on what you do individually, we're going to figure out a beat that all three of us can jam out to together. The crowd's going to go bananas and we'll all be rock stars. Sound good? Yeah. Let's try it. All right. All right, Vincent, you want to start us off? Yeah. All right. Get nice and close to the microphone to get the best sound and just experiment, have fun. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, all right. Solid stuff on both ends. All right, so let's. Um, okay. Ellie, can you come on, do, do what you're just doing, but can you keep that going? Can you can you keep that going, nice and steady? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, Elliot Vincent. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming up and rocking the stage. So awesome. Uh, I don't even know how you get down. You know, yeah, go, go down the side there and Hello, then see guys. if you go around. Thanks so much for coming up and rocking the stage. All right. I love when he would beatbox and he would blow it like his, his bangs would kind of go. I saw that, around. yeah. That's so cool. That was new. That was a new thing for us to see. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so. And just real quick, please, um, I'm not sure who threw something on stage. Please refrain from throwing something um, on stage. Someone could get hurt. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. So, you know, before we want to move on here, though, so we do want to clear up a common misconception, though, that a lot of people do have nowadays, though. So many people think that a cappella is a genre of music, like pop, rock, R&B, soul, all that stuff. But it's actually really just a way to perform all of those genres, you know, just different ways of performing rock, pop, and all that stuff. And again, as long as it's with the human voice, it's considered a cappella, though. But now you might be asking yourselves, though, well, where does a cappella actually come from? And where did all this originate from? Well, in many religions, instruments were forbidden. So the only way that they could make music for their services was by using their voice. So a cappella is Latin for in the church or in the style of the church, which used to refer to that music made in those services, but now refers to any music made without instruments. One of the earliest forms of a cappella is known as Gregorian chant. If you all listen very carefully to Dave over here, He's singing an example of that. Something totally different than what we've done so far today. There's only one voice, one melody, no harmony, no drums. Now, now eventually, they did add harmony, as you probably suspected. Usually in the interval of a fifth above with the sound that Wallace is adding now. And they thought that was the coolest thing. They did that for a while. But as they added more notes and harmony developed over the years, four-part harmony became the standard. And by the time we get to the 1400s over in Europe, there were two styles that used this four-part harmony extensively, and that was motets and madrigals. So here's an example of a madrigal. Sing we enchanted while the love doth granted Thank you. And from there, we've got to speed up a little bit to the 16 and the 1700s, to the time when, sadly, the Africans were taken from their homes as slaves to Europe in the early US. But what they took with them was their music and their religion. They combined it with the music and the religion of the people that took them. Sweet and we got spirituals like this one. Sweet cherry hut, coming for to carry me home. Now in the late 1800s, those spirituals transformed into two styles of music. The first one being the blues, the second one, gospel music. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go. Y'all had me worried. All right, y'all, and from there, we've got to speed up again 
to the early 1900s. And at that time in history, the things we use today for music weren't around yet. Like, well, stuff like YouTube, Spotify, it wasn't around. But there were radios. The problem is, the radios weren't playing music yet, so when people wanted music, they had to make it themselves. So what they do, right, they would gather together. And while they were gathered, they would talk about their lives, what was going on, the current events, and they would sing. Which brings us to this next style of acapella, which is known for its really tight harmonies. And all of the singing and talking about their lives happened in the same place where people got their hair cut, the barbershop. All right, now when we hit the 1950s, now you get music not only on the radio, but also on TV. And the new style of the time, rock and roll, spread around really quickly because of this. And in New York City and Philadelphia, you had friends that would hang out on the street corners singing a cappella, but singing the songs that they were listening to on the radio. And to imitate this new rock and roll sound, but they would use these silly nonsense syllables, kind of like this. Or well, they might say ramalama ding dong or doo wop ba dooby doo, but it's because of these syllables that this style of music became known as doo wop. And that brings us to today in contemporary a cappella where every genre imaginable is being sung. And it's not just on the radio or the street corners or the barbershops anymore. It's, it's everywhere from online and every platform you can think of. And they're using songs like this one to reach their fans. Baby, baby, why don't you just meet me in the middle, in the middle? I'm losing my mind. Take a seat, ooh, right over there, sat on the stairs, stay or leave. Stay or leave. I cannot so bear when I'm unaware of just how we got into this mess. Got so aggressive, I know we had all good intentions. Ooh, so pull me closer, why don't you pull me closer? Why don't you cut her over? I can't just let you go. Oh, baby, why don't you just meet me in the middle? I'm losing my mind just a little. So why don't you just meet me in the middle? In the middle. Ooh. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So we're going to do one more song for you all before we have to go. But we have a couple of minutes. We're going to see how this goes. We're going to see if you all have any questions for us. Now, I'm not sure if there's someone with the mic in, the house. in the house. Yeah. Is there? Yes, there is. So someone's going to come. If you just raise your hand, that'd be great. And then if the rest of you all could just keep it down so that you can hear and we can hear, we can get through five of these, do another song. Thanks, Scott. And be on our way. Thank you. Have you, have you guys ever like sang Michael Jackson or like ABC? Because I at first I thought you guys were Maroon Five or like the Jackson Five. <laughs> but like, have you guys ever like sang ABC or like um just be it or like? Yeah, oh. yeah. We you know we do um we do a Jackson Five song and we do a Michael Jackson song as well. Um, you can't do this without doing a, ja a Michael Jackson song for sure. So yeah, yeah, we it's like do. A requirement. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Can you sing the 20th Century Fox theme song? 
Please, um, I want we to hear it. We cannot, unfortunately. And unfortunately, we're not going to take many requests today. We have to come to a public show. Yeah. Come to one of our public shows and, and see if we do it. So, unfortunately, we can't sing that 24 hours. I, I, I know what you're talking about, though. Okay. Got one more over here. Um, have you guys sang, like, since you were a child and when you got, like, older over the years, you started singing with the radio over and over? Good question. Um, so, I guess, uh, so when did we begin singing and how did we? So, the um, answer is yes, we all started fairly young. I know for me, I started singing back in uh, second grade. I think we all st got started roughly in elementary school. And for most of us, I know for most of us, it was starting singing with, let's say, cassettes or, you know, with the radio and things like that. And then, and as we got older, um, you know, be becoming part of, becoming part of uh, say, organized groups like choruses and things like that. But yeah, we've all been doing it for a long time. How does it feel that you, you are the only one that beatbox? Ah, that's a okay, great so why is it the, that I'm the only one that beatboxes? Well, I'm, I'm not the only one that beatboxes in life. All these other guys <laughs> can do a little bit. But on stage, that's mainly my job. Just like Kevin, his main job is to sing the bass. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody sort of has their role on stage. Now, sometimes they'll switch around. Sometimes, you know, like in that last one, you just saw Kevin come out and take a lead, even though he's usually singing, like you said, doom ba dooms and, you know, things like that. <laughs> so everybody has their role. Sometimes, very infrequently, they switch it up, but usually not because even though they can beatbox, I can't sing. So oh, you can sing. sort you of stuck sing. here. <laughs> you can sing. We, we love your voice, Kevin. Important to you, the kid that's in the balcony there. Yeah. Let's see, farthest we've traveled, uh, I would probably say when you got, we went to China. Yeah. On the other side of the world. On the other yes. side of the world, pretty much. So. It's about as far as you can go. <laughs> before the coronavirus, before that. Uh, yeah, how are we doing on time? Do we have time? Do you want to take one from the, from the balcony? From the, I know there's a bunch in the back. Oh, um, we see, can't I see, see I it see, all because yeah, of the um, lights up yes. there. But maybe there's a teacher in the balcony yeah, that, yeah, could, uh, yeah, that could get a couple questions a for question. us up there. We got him, Joe. Uh, do any of the shows involve any sort of piano or keyboards? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll start. We'll go down. I take piano, uh, keyboards, and bass guitar. Uh, I, I know trumpet and guitar. I, I play piano. I play piano and trumpet. And I play piano and recorder. So there you go. He's great at it too. There you go. I am good at it. Cool. How about how about this dude right here? That's a great question. What's our favorite song to sing? And I think it it varies, you know, as we go down the line. Um, I think one of my favorite songs is um, "Imagine" by John Lennon. I think my favorite song to sing is "Say My Name" by Destiny's Child. Uh, I got to go with my original song because it's my song, you know? <laughs> but yeah, that's my, my favorite. Uh, we do a really cool disco medley in our show, so that's pretty fun to sing. Yeah, and kind of in a similar vein, we have an Earth, Wind, and Fire medley yeah. that I really dig. I like that. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Sorry. Oh, yeah, they're way, I'm, I'm sorry. They're, yeah, they're way, way back there. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Oh, a Panic at the Disco song. Yeah. I do on my own. No, we have not. <laughs> but yeah, we do. Thinking about it, though. Thinking about it. Sorry, a little bit louder, please. Have you ever been before? Thank you. On stage, On stage yeah, OK. Um, yeah, <laughs> like today, for instance. <laughs> you know, I think, I think we all get jitters mm -hmm. every time we hit the stage. And sometimes it's out of nervousness, and sometimes it's out of excitement. Mm. You know, the thing is, <clears throat> to get over those, that stage fright, you have to A, be prepared. Be really, really prepared in what you're going to do. And B, just be, you know, try to, you know, for us, it's easy to um, feed off of each other and the support we get up here. Um, but there are a lot of tricks to get over stage fright. I don't know if there's any actors or actresses or singers that get stage fright. Um, just one quick trick is... If you're scared to look out to the audience, just look at the exit signs. 
Because if you look out at the exit signs, a lot of people are going to think you're looking at them. And then eventually you'll get so comfortable looking at those beautiful exit signs that you're going to look down. Oh. And um, so that's one, like, trick that we still use today just to um, get over our stage fright. One more. Oh, one more? Okay. When did we go to China? Thank you. Uh, so, uh, 2016 and 2018 in the summer. Yeah, that's when we went to China. Okay, let's... How about... Let's do another song. You guys want to hear one more song before we go? Okay, cool. So... So real quick, if you all still have questions, sadly we're out of time. We actually have to drive up up north. We have a seven-hour drive now. So, um, but if you still have questions for us, we encourage you to visit our website, which is ballinthehouse.com. Um, you can feel free to email us any questions that you might have. There's also links to um, social media. There's also links to our um, all of our music videos are on YouTube, and we're on all the streaming sites. So you can uh, just type in Ball in the House, and all of our CDs will come up. Um, you know, and lastly, the most important thing. You know, for us, when we were young, music was important. We loved it. But as we got older, it was even more important. You know, even just to decompress by listening to our favorite songs, decompressing from the stresses in, you know, from studies or home life or whatever. Music is really, really powerful. We encourage you, if you love to sing and if you love to perform, please get involved in your music programs, in your art programs at your schools. You know, music is something that you can carry throughout your whole life. It doesn't matter what walk of life you're from, what you're going through. Um, music is fantastic. And everybody here, you know, when it comes to songwriting and lyrics and singing and performing, everybody has a story to tell. And it's really important. You know, the world is a better place when you tell your story. And you can inspire so many people just by doing that. And we do that on stage. We try to anyways. We try to inspire young people to just get involved and stay involved. You know, you can do other things. Please remember, you can play sports and you can play an instrument. You can sing a chorus and you can hang out with your friends. Your friends, your true friends will support you. I promise you that. And when you surround yourself with positive people, positive things will happen. You know, for us, we got scholarships to college because we stayed involved in the arts and we were able to tour all over the world with our college choruses. So we encourage you all to get involved and stay involved. And the last thing and the most important thing, is support each other because everybody here, teachers included, everybody needs support. Um, you know, harmony is really, really powerful and it's not just on stage, so spread it, spread love and spread music. So we got one more song before we have to go. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to email us at ballinthehouse.com. You guys have a great rest of the day. Have a great school year. Teachers, thank you for all that you do. We really appreciate you very much. We want to thank the Avalon Theater for having us in. Um, we love coming here. It's such a beautiful, beautiful theater. Um, so we're going to do one more song before we have to go. Um, have a great rest of the day. If you know this one, please sing along. Here we go.
guys very much. We're ball in the house. Have a great day. Thanks for having us. Thanks, everybody. Take care.